So my name is Abelardo Pardo and I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Sydney in Australia. So what are the barriers that the learning analytics community has overcome in the last three years? I think the main one, there are several, but the main one that comes to mind is that people is now much more aware of how data can influence uh, learning or education at different levels. Um, three, four, five years ago, we were still making the point that maybe using data would be a very good advantage. Now you don't have to make that point. I think now the conversation has evolved to how do I use the data because I'm convinced that it's going to be useful and how can I make sure that um, it has an impact. Mm -hmm. So there's not much convincing anymore. It's more finding the way to, to make it happen. Um, where do you see learning analytics within five years' time? I moved recently from Europe to Australia, and one of the big differences that, that I've seen is the tendency or the trajectory that I'm observing is that certain institutions in Australia are now becoming very much aware or worried on how to use data to increase uh, student capturing, capturing students basically, to increase the number of students that they have on board. Um, I don't remember seeing that type of pressure in Europe. Um, what I see in five years is like many educational institutions, at least in Australia, will have some sort of intelligence at different levels within the institution to capture data and use that data to increase the number of students, to improve the student experience, and to offer students a much more personalized type of service, like for example, suggesting them strategies to cope with the degrees, uh, social strategies like, for example, associations that they can join to make their life uh, more enjoyable on campus, uh, suggestions on how to approach difficult courses, so that type of thing, yeah, I think in five years it'll be much more common, in, in at least in higher educational institutions in Australia.